Good morning um, and welcome to our webinar today. Uh, my name is uh, Caroline Cardinal. I am an application from Molecular Devices. And um, I'm going to try to share my desktop with you guys. Uh, perfect. So here we go. So today's uh, webinar is on how to do uh, microplate data acquisition and data analysis, analysis using softmax for software. So first, from events to the result. So softmax for software is compatible with a wide selection of microplate readers for molecular devices. The software is very flexible in terms of use and it will allow you to do data capture with a very quick and easy export option or to co customize data analysis and do a full analysis of the data. Our goal today is to introduce the new feature and explore the architecture of the software while we write a basic protocol. So we will take an empty protocol and we'll slowly build the data analysis in order to obtain a fully analyzed protocol. While we do this, we'll also review all the new features of MaxPost. But here is a little flavor. So first, um, the SoftMax Post 6 has now a new improved user experience. And for a preview for the, the current user that uses SoftMax Post 5, this is how SoftMax Post 5 is organized. SoftMax Post 6 has now a Microsoft Ribbon interface that will allow you to access more easily to SoftMax Post functions. New icons have been added as well. And there's now a zooming option possible. You access the zooming at the bottom of the protocol and you will be able to zoom from 70% to 200% into each individual section. Master 6 will allow you to work on several protocols at once. And you just need to select the protocol you wish to work on and you will automatically come into the main window. Each protocol has a navigation tree to access the different sections from the protocol. Here you can see I have highlighted plate one, and plate one will appear into the main protocol uh, window. Now we're going to go into Softmax Pro to see how this is done. So you can see at the at the top of the of the software, you can see the um, Microsoft uh, Windows ribbon that is allowing you to access different functions more easily. Also, you can access various protocol by just uh, selecting the protocol at the top of the document. The navigation tree will allow me to access various sections within the protocol. At the moment, I am in the results section, but if I wanted to move into the plate section, I just select the plate in the navigation tree, and now the plate section is into the main document. The zoom in option at the bottom of SoftMax Pro will allow you to zoom in, um, in and out of the document. So you can visualize each section um, with the best view. So SoftMax Pro 6 has a very effective, effective data display, and there's a new 3D view that will end a color map that will allow you to identify very easily uh, certain sum samples, such as positive control, negative control, to see the desired dilution uh, within, within your plate, or to identify samples that um, are not uh, within range of your replicate. There's also plate cloning that will allow you to view data uh, differently. So here we have a color map, or we have just the values, or to analyze the data differently without filling the plate a second time. The comparison view will allow you to, to see various sections of the protocol into a single window. So it will be much easier to compare now several graphs or to have the graph and the plate section within the same window in top max form. The well scan will allow you now to, to select the shape of the well, and you can select from a round well or square well if you want to do the well scan. Finally, the advanced, um, the advanced export and the PDF converter make it easier to uh, analyze the data from our else or to um, export data um, without, um, 
as being linked to a printer. With a data analysis, you have more than 140 ready-to-run protocols that can be customized further. You access them through the protocol library, and we will have a look on how to do this. Custom um, data reduction, the syntax helper, so writing formula in Softmax Pro 6 is becoming very easy as you just need to select a syntax helper into the formula window and Softmax Pro will guide you into the formula writing. Also, you have some advanced template option in order to, to create a very appropriate template. And you have 17 different cursed options to choose from. In addition, the, the, the graph um, gives you much more information than previously. You can have now the EC50 uh, calculated and reported automatically below the graph if parallel line analysis is selected. Data security has been improved, and you have now a data recovery system that will allow you to recover a protocol if your system crashes. Also, there's an autosave that is um, linked to each protocol, so each protocol can be saved after read uh, at different locations depending on the user. So now how Softmax Pro is organized. So Softmax Pro uses two types of files. You have protocol files, or as we call them, SPR files, and you will have the microplate layout, the reader settings, the formula, but you will not have any data. As soon as you have data, they become in data file, and they have the extension SDA. Softmax Pro 6 is compatible with all the versions of Softmax Pro, and you will be able to open anything that has been created from 4.3 to 5.4. Softmax Pro experiments and protocol are, are organized by functional sections. So you will have node section, play section, Group section, graph section, and cubet set. Each section has a toolbar for frequency access uh, options. So now we will review each single section and work on them inside the software. So first of all, the anatomy of the node section. The node section provides text based details and summarizes assay data. You will be able to change the title. You will be able to enter some formula in order to get very important results within the node section. Here we have decided to get the KD of the enzymatic reaction, but you could get the C50 or the samples that are, uh, that are not meeting the requirement. You can also add a section image. So what do we call section image in, in Softmax Pro? It means you will take an image of the section inside the software, so it can be the plate, it can be the table, or it can be the graph and you will, you will create an image and put it into the node section. This section can be refreshed as you carry on the analysis of the, of the protocol. You can also add an image. It can be the logo of your company. It can be, it can be the logo of the kit you're using, or it can be in a, in a picture that can be appropriate uh, for you. Finally, you can add some text inside the node section. So now let's see how this works inside the software. So first of all, how do you open a new protocol? Well, if you want to use the protocol from the library, you have to select the protocol menu, then protocol manager. This will allow you to access the protocol library. And now you can access one of the pre-written protocols from that list. Also, you can create additional folders where you can put all the protocols that you're using daily so they are easy, you can access to them easily. So here's a protocol from today that I, that I have uh, added to the list uh, in the library. Here I'm going to use this protocol as I already have data in, but it's exactly the same protocol that, where I have put data. So first, I'm accessing the node section. And you can see that by selecting the node section in the navigation tree, I have a node section now open to the main document. I can now change the title. And I can add some text. For example, I can say that the lot number is and the lot number of my enzyme. 
also I can put some remarks um, such as um, for example that A7 and C12 are masked um, because no enzyme was added. So this is a text-based part inside the software. So now I can have some, some summaries. For example, here I want to create a summary that will display the date of today. And you can see that inside my, my formula editor, I, can, I have some help on top of my score to find the formula. And very quickly, I have a summary created to give the date of today. Here I have an, another summary that is reporting the EC50. At the moment, I have no value because the data analysis of the protocol has not been done yet. But as soon as we've done the template the, and the, 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 the curve has been plotted, the EC50 will be calculated automatically. So now we're going to add an image. And here I want to add the molecular devices logo. You can now select the image and you can move it to the location that you wish inside the node section. Now I want to add a section image and here I want to add the graph. So this is going to create an image of the graph. And here you can see that now I have my graph in my node section. As soon as I've done the template again, then I will have a curve inside my graph, and this will be uploaded when I select the refresh button. So now we have seen the node section, we're going to move on into the plate section. So the plate section has also um, a, a, a menu, and it will allow you to access different things. So the first icon will allow you to access the instrument settings. Then you will access the template editor. Then you will have the data reduction, the data display, the masking well, the display of the kinetic and spectrum from selected wells, and also the 3D representation. The aim of the plate is to summarize microplate data at a glance and to illustrate placement of groups with color-coded shades. You will visually identify mass well values, and you will provide an easy to read summary of the play details. Here you can see that I have all the information about the instrument settings on the right of the plate, and also I have all the reduction settings for the calculation that's carried out on the plate at the bottom of the plate. So let's see that into detail. First of all, the reader settings, which is the first icon of the toolbar. And the reader settings um, will depend on which instrument you are working with of Mac Pro or which cartridges are inside the paradigm. So depending on the instrument, you will be able to do absorbent, fluorescent, luminescent, time result, and fluorescent polarization. Depending on which mode you have chosen, you will be able to choose from different types. And that will vary from endpoint, kinetic, spectrum, well scan and alpha screen with paradigm. In Softmax Pro, we are now accessing the plate section and we can access the settings by looking at the first icon into the plate menu. Here I have the paradigm in simulation mode and therefore I can choose from any cartridges available for this instrument. For the purpose of today, we're going to choose absorbent going to be an absorbent mode, and we're going to do an endpoint. We're going to read the assay at two wavelengths. So I can select up to six, but here I will choose two. And I will choose from 450 to 540. And here you can type any wavelength that you want, because it's, it's a monochromator-based cartridge. The play type, where you can choose from 6 to 1536, uh, well, um, well played for that instrument, and you can then select from the library of plates available. If none of those plates was describing the type of plate you're using, you can also add plates to this library. Then you will have to select 
the area of the play that you want to read, and you have some additional options such as the past check, the shaking, and options such as the read order. Now moving on to the template. So as soon as you don't, so to access the template, you have to select the second icon of the toolbar. Basically, as soon as you've done the template, all the data analysis uh, that, is, that is done into the groups and into the graph will be done automatically. So you will create sample groups from, um, from the list that is available uh, from this protocol. You can add, edit, or delete if you want to. So the template to do will allow you to assign selected wells to different color-coded groups in order to map the play for easy identification of the different samples. You can then assign a name and um, describe the sample with concentration or dilution and even a barcode. You can then define your blank and you will have two types of blanks available. You have a play blank which will remove the average value of the blank to each individual well of the microplate, and you have the group blank, which will remove the average value of the group blank only to the wells belonging to that group. So the group can be uh, customized further, and you can add or edit the groups. And if you select one of those two options, the following window will appear. Here you will be able to change the name or the color that will represent that group. Then you can choose three different table layouts, standard, unknown, and custom. And depending on how you want to analyze the data, one might be better than the other. Finally, you have two ways to describe your sample. So you can either describe a concentration or a dilution. You can also be a percentage, but that will add an extra column to the table. Also, you can choose a unit from the, from the drop-down menu, or you can type the unit of your choice. Also, the series button for dilution series has been improved. So you will have to select the, the series button when you've done a dilution series, and the following window will appear. You will have to describe your replicate. So is the sample that you're going you're gonna to choose located at the top, is it at the bottom, is it left or is it right? And how is the pattern of your replicate? Are they in the y direction or on the x direction? Finally, you can name the sample and you can choose the starting value for your concentration or your dilution factor depending on the sample. And then you have to, to tell the software what is the step. Have you done um, um, a one divided by two, uh, uh, or one divided by three type of dilution. So now we're going to go into the into SoftMax Pro, and we're going to do the template of the plate in order to do the data analysis. As it is now, you can see that my tables are empty, and I have no data within my graph. It's all empty. So we're going to do the template in order to populate the value section. So I select the second icon to access my template editor, and I'm going to select those wells as my standard. This is a dilution series, and my more concentrated sample is on the left. This is um, my replicates organized into the y direction, where I have four replicates. My starting sample is going to be called 01, and my concentration was 100 micromolar, and I did um, a one in three dilution. I select OK, and now you can see that automatically the plate was populated with my replicate and that my serial dilution with the concentration was calculated automatically. Here you can see the step of my dilution, and here we have the, the end concentration, starting from 100 micromolar to sample 11. So everything is done automatically. Now I will select my play blank, and now I have two types of samples. Sample one, which are known, but there's a dilution series 
within the samples, and it's a one in two dilution. So my, my starting sample is on the left. I've got four pK, and my dilution factor is a one divided by two. So the second sample, it is exactly the same, except that here you can see that I don't have my dilution factor, so I need to add it. So I'm going into edit, and I'm going to add a sample descriptor. If I wanted to, I can rename the sample, or I can even change the color. So here I'm choosing a column name that is going to be called dilution, but I don't want any units for now. I access the series button, and once again, I have to describe my sample. Whereas my most concentrated sample here is on my left, my replicates are in the x direct, in the y direction, and I have four pK, and my dilution is a one in two dilution from the first sample. Here you can see that now I have all my templates done for my plate, and I can choose either to display the sample name, or I can choose to display the descriptor. And here I will have for my standard the concentration of each sample, and for my, of, of each of each repli um, replicate. And for my sample, I will have the dilution series for each replicate. You can print that window, and you can use it in order to prepare your plate later on. I click on OK, and now you can see that my plate has collocated shapes well belonging to the different groups. If I select the group section, I can now see that I have data inside my plate, my groups, and I have also my graph that has been plotted. You can access also the template editor from the, 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 the Microsoft uh, ribbon at the top of the document. And here you will, add, you will have the template editor, and you will be able to copy, paste, import, and export data. So here you can see if I select the plate, I have now my template editor, and I can copy, paste, import, or export. Now moving on to the reduction setting. So the reduction setting will allow you to apply a formula to all the wells. So the option will change depending on the instrument and the setting selected. So basically, you will be able to choose if you want to use the play bank. And if you're doing a kinetic or a wave bank scan, you will be also to change the limit. Changing the limit will allow you actually to remove some of the data from the data analysis. So, for example, in kinetics, sometimes you want to remove the first minute of the kinetic point of the data analysis. And here you can put a lag time of 60, which means that the first 60 seconds will not be taken into account for the data analysis. So depending on what you're doing in your experiment, you will have different menus. In that window, I'm allowed to do calculation between two wavelengths because the plate was read with two different wavelengths. If you're doing a wavelength scan, you will also have a menu with, uh, the, for the wavelength scan, and you will be able to obtain the lambda mass max directly. Here you have a kinetic menu that will allow you to obtain the, the reduction um, data for a kinetic. And you can choose a V max, a time to maximum, or the slope, and this will be displayed automatically and calculate for all the data of the microplate. We see now that in softmax pro, so we access the data reduction by selecting the third icon inside the plate menu. But here, the data reduction menu we have here, it's much simpler than the one discussed in the presentation because this is not a kinetic, this is not a wavelength scan. We're just able now to select if we use the blank or if we need to do some a calculation between the two wavelengths. For the purpose of the assay, we're going to do uh, the first wavelength minus the second wavelength. You can see that now the data reduction are displayed below state, and that will be very easy to, to see.
Moving on onto the data display. So you access the data display by selecting the fourth icon into the play toolbar. And this will allow you to see to see either raw data with reduced number if you wanted to, or the reduced data. If reduced data is selected, you will be able to see a number, grayscale or color map, which is the one displayed over here. And this is really good to visualize the data because you will be able to see where are your positive control, where are your negative control, where are the samples the most concentrated, and where are the samples the less concentrated. Also, you can see if there's some discrepancy between the same samples. The plot, you can display a plot if you're doing a kinetic or a webbing plan. Going into the software, we're going to access the display by having a look by selecting the fourth icon. So here we can either choose raw data or reduce, and if we have the reduce, at the moment we think we think the, the numbers, but we can choose the color map. You can see now that it's very easy for me to identify the more concentrated sample in red and my blank, and or the less concentrated sample in blue. This can also uh, you can also have the reduced number, which means that now you have the color plus the number displayed into the same way. So for, for the purpose of today, we're going to display the number only. We have some additional uh, options into the play section, such as the masking. You can zoom in in a kinetic or wavelength scan by selecting the wells and then clicking on this little uh, zooming. And also, you have a 3D representation. So this, once again, this is a great way to visualize your data because you don't need to do the template. This is available to you straight away. And this will allow you to visualize your data without going into the data analysis. You can rotate that graph. Um, right to left, and you can also rotate it up and down, so we can we can take the best view um, of your choice. And same again, this will allow you to see where are your less concentrated sample, most concentrated sample. If you have if you have some discrepancy within the replicate, or just to identify things within your plate. So without doing any template or data analysis, this is available and it's very useful to, um, to see your, uh, your data. Sorry about that. This is my computer. So now the data analysis, the plate cloning. So the plate cloning will allow you to create multiple templates of the same data or to create multiple reductions of the same data. You don't need to reread the plate for cal different calculation and that shorter the time of, of the read or of the of the data analysis. And in Sosmax Pro, how do we do this? We are in the plate section and we can just create a clone. Which is now a, a, the, the, this is now a, a, the same data that are just put in a different plate section within the same plate section. So with those data, we can create a new template. And to save time, what we can do is we can copy the template from the first plate and paste it in the second plate, but we can create it in new groups. When we do that, we will just, once again, we will create a plate with color-coded shades um, for the different groups. And he has created three groups that are identical to the three groups I had previously. So you create an exact copy of the groups that, were, um, that have been previously created. Now in those groups, you can do a complete different data analysis uh, that will adjust to your needs. So in addition to creating an additional template, what we can do is we can actually now show the data in a color-coded shade, in a colored map, and selecting the reduced number as well. So from press one, 
to plate minus one, we have two different ways to analyze the data and two different ways to view the data, but they are exactly the same data. So the cloning will allow you to save a lot of time. So now we're going to move on into the group section. And in the group section, you will be able to add a column, delete a column, add a summary, and show a summary formula. In addition now, there's a show or hide icon that will allow you to granularly select the, the, the columns you don't want to see. This is just allowing you to remove the columns that are giving intermediate calculation and just show the final calculation inside, inside your table. The columns will allow you to apply formula to an array of values, and you will generate another array of values. They can be added, they can be resized, they can be hidden, they can be shown or deleted. Summary, on the other end, will apply formulas to an array of values, and they will generate a single summary value. They are always at the bottom of each group section. So Maximo 6 has a great tool now that is called the Syntax Helper, and this will allow you to very easily enter, write new formula or modified previous formula without generating any error. It will automatically reference the, the, the formula so it makes it very easy and avoid mistakes. Also, the data display is more granular and it will allow you to, to display different things. So the columns are, will allow you to do different type of formula. So you have statistics, you will be able to display statistic results using the function average, standard deviation, standard error, maximum or minimum. You will be able to compare results using conditional. So if a condition is true, then uh, the true results, otherwise false results. And also to report data using accessors such as um, well ID, sample name, or well value. So now let's enter some formulas in SoftMax Pro. So first, we're going to work into the standard table. So you can see that as it is, it's not very easy to have a look at the entire table, even if I, if I use my tool. So in order to view the table and work on it, I'm going to hide the replicate. So in order to hide the replicate, I can just select that. And I will do the same in the sample or in sample two. And now you can see that I can adjust my zoom, and I'm able to see all my data, and I can work very easily within my table. Now, I have only the, uh, the I, I, have, I don't have any replicate, and if I look into my show and hide button, I can see that all the, all the columns that use replicate are actually not selected. And this was done automatically just by selecting hide replicate. So now the first thing I'm going to do is actually add a summary because I want to calculate the percentage of my, my, my mean values uh, compared to the maximum. So I need to, um, to have a summary to report the maximum of my mean value of the standard. I select the, st I select the syntax helper, and now starting to write. So maximum, the formula is max, so I'm selecting max. And now I have to answer, I want the maximum of what? I want the maximum of the mean value. And you can see that all the mean value um, uh, columns present in that protocol are just appearing, and I just need to select the one I want to take. Yeah, it's going to be the mean value of my standard. I check the syntax, and I click OK. So where is my summary? Sorry, I can't find my summary anymore. So I will retype it again. And is it because I'm using, there we go. That's because I'm using a table, and I should not use a table. I should use a summary. 
So I'm going to remove that table. And I would select SX, sold mass STD, and here it's going to be mass bracket mean value as standard. Run automatically. Now you can see, here we go, I have my summary created. I can move it where I want to. And most importantly, I've got the percentage that are calculated according to this maximum value. So now moving on into the samples. So the samples basically are unknown. So the instrument will report an OD value, but I need to back calculate the concentration from the standard curve corresponding to the mean value. And this is done completely automatically with, my, with the current uh, table I have. In addition to this, I have the adjusted concentration, which is the concentration multiplied by the dilution factor. Now what I want to add is a column where I will, I will stipulate which sample fall within the range of the maximum and the minimum value of my standard and which value are not within range. So I can call this column results. And here it will be a conditional formula where I say, so if the mean, oh, I forgot to check the syntax helper. So, so if the mean value, and here I will select the mean value of sample one is, um, is above or equal to the minimum of my standard. Here we go again. I have again the summary created just for me. And the mean, once again, I choose mean sample one. So you can see that when it is red, it means that the formula is not correct at the moment. As it's becoming blue, it means that the syntax is correct and everything is falling, is falling into the right direction. Here it's going to be the mass of my standard. And here we go again. I've got this in my drop-down menu, so I can select Max of my standard. Then what happens? Then if they fall into those two conditions, then pass, otherwise fail. And once again, it's red to start with, and then it is blue. I check the syntax. And for some reason, there's something not correct, and here I have my operator that's not here anymore. I check the syntax. Um, there we go. Sorry. So he will tell you what's going on with the formula. Here my syntax is valid. I select OK, and I have not. An, I have now an extra column that is telling me uh, that my samples are failing. I can just copy the column and paste it into the second sample to have the calculation done automatically. So here, very easily with the syntax helper, I'm not able, I'm now able to create new columns, change the formula, and add new summaries. Now the graphing options. So for that is very uh, useful for comparing data, and it will allow you to graph any two columns in the table or directly from the play section. You will have 17 regression sheets available for data input extrapolation, and you can plot multiple curves uh, on on the graph for easy comparison. You will be able to export the graph as a picture file for PowerPoint or program of your choice. Finally, there's a customized legend, label, font, and color. So the, the toolbar of the graph will allow you to edit the graph option, the font, the symbol, the plot sign, what are you plotting, to uh, optimize the x and y axis settings, and to apply a predefined curve fit from the 17 curve fit available. 
So you will be able to choose some statistic options such as PLA, the weighting, the confidence interval. From this is the graph options are available either from the graph or from the main the main window um, into the Microsoft uh, Ribbon interface at the top. The graph now is giving you more information, and you will be able to get the EC50. As soon as PLA has been selected, you can have the independent, which is a representation of how good is a fit. The, the, the better the fit, the more bars you will have into the independent. You will be able to choose the confidence interval. Also, you will have the standard error and the estimated relative potency. In addition to this, you will also have an estimated value for each parameter, the calculation, standard error, the confidence interval, and also the independent. So here we're going to create a new graph. And in order to create a new graph, we're going to the top menu and we create new graph. Here we're going to be able to rename the graph. We will rename the plot. And we will select from which table we want to put the data. Here we'll use the standard. And for the x-axis, it's going to be the concentration. For the y-axis, it's going to be the percentage. Also, you can change the symbol, the symbol size, and the line, and also the color. So here you can see my curve. At the moment, there's no curve fit. But I can change already some information, such as the x-axis. It's going to be my concentration. I also have the percentage, and I'm going to change here slightly the scale, because instead of having 100%, I want 110, so I can see better the data. Finally, I'm choosing a curve fit. That's going to be a four-parameter curve fit, and unfortunately, he has not saved my scale. And now I'm seeing the data, the, a nice um, dose response curve for my standard. I'm not going to do any statistics today, but if you have any questions, um, please send me an email. We will have a look in a minute at the options, but we will not go into the details. If you select, at the moment, there's not information, any information on the fit, and you need to select the arrow in order to display the parameter, the the parameter, the estimated value, the standard error, and the confidence interval. And you can remove that information by selecting the arrow again. So if you select if you select the the the, the PLA option uh, the, the statistic option at the top of the of the menu on, on the last the last icon, you will have this window appearing. And this window will allow you to access three different tabs, the curve fit, the weighting, and the statistics. So we're going to cover uh, what those windows do, but we will not go into, the, into detail. So if you have any questions, please send us an email, and we'll be able to, to answer you directly. So the first tab is the curve fit option. And here you will be able to choose which, if you want to use PLA, which uh, a regression you're using, and which plot is going to be used as the reference plot. You can also manually set the parameter to a certain value. The second window is the weighting. And here you will have to select which curve fit you want to weight and also which weight you want to apply. Weighting will be individual for, for the values curve, so you can select the different weight or the different curves put it onto the same bar. Finally, the statistics. Here you will be able to choose from four different methods to calculate the confidence interval, depending on the distribution of your data. So a new feature of SoftMax Pro is a comparison view. Here you will be able to visualize a different section of the protocol into the same window. You just have to select the section that you want to visualize and dra drag it and drop it into the comparison view. So here we're selecting the comparison view. 
And you can see that now it is empty. But I can just, I select my graph, and I can drag it and drop it. So it is now available in my comparison window. Following the graph, I want to see my plate section. So what I'm doing is I select my plate, I drag it, and I drop it into the section. And here you can select one plate or the other. I can decide to zoom back in so I can see every single section at once. You can make the section full or you can make them small if you wanted to have several graphs inside and having a look at all of them. So this is very versatile in terms of what you can do within that comparison window and what you can visualize within that window. So now the data recovery. So if you select the little plate, you will be able to select the autosave option. So autosave will allow you to uh, autosave a different location the same uh, protocol. And you will have to select add or to edit if you want to change or add the location. When you select one of those two buttons, you will, be able, you will have the following window. And now you will be able to choose the file location either to the protocol folder or to an SI folder of your choice. You can change the file name, so it can be a protocol name or an assigned name. But you can choose from six different formats uh, for, the, for, the, the, for the save. It can be a protocol file, an XML file, a text file with a list, or a text file with a plate format. And, and, very, and now, very importantly, you can save directly into, into an Excel file as a list or as a plate. There's also data recovery. So if, if your computer crashes uh, while you're doing something in the software, it will recover a data file, so you don't lose anything uh, if you have a computer failure. So the export is now very granular in terms of macro, and you will be able to export either an entire file or a selected section. Then you can select if you want the raw data, the reduced, or both, and the format if you want a CXT file or an, XL, an XLS file into a column or in a plate format. Column is generally advised for kinetic and spectrum. So the printing, so you will be able to, there's an auto printing uh, option. So for example, you will be able to select this little printer into the navigation tree and then to select the section you don't want to print. So like this, you have a very granular printing option. Then you can select the little plate again, and you will be able to access to the print um, options uh, through that window. You'll be able to select to print all or print select the selected section. Finally, you have a PDF converter that will allow you to save a PDF version of your protocol for future printing or for, uh, for, for your record. So let's do that into the software. So I'm selecting this little plate, and now I'm going to be able to export my data. I select export, and you can see that every single section of my protocol is present into, uh, into my export window. If I want to export everything, I select experiment. But if I want to export only the plate, I select only the plate. Here I want to export the reduced, and as I'm doing only an endpoint, I want to export it as a plate format. I select OK. I will uh, save it into my document. And here, you can see that the document that I have exported show the reduced data of the first plate and the reduced data of my cloned plate. So I was able to export both sets of data into one file. In addition, if I want to print PDF document of my file, but I don't want to print some section. For example, I don't want to print the group section. I can just select my group and then select my little printer. And it doesn't, and it will not print the section that uh, have this little printer next to it. 
Now I select a little plate again and I put save as PDF. I have a PDF um, that is created and my final document is coming. And you can see that I have now an exact copy in a PDF format of my protocol for my record. So some additional features, so SoftMax Softmax Pro 6 is compatible uh, with uh, for automation with some robotic and several LIM systems. There's an extensive uh, software and hardware validation tool, such as the IQ QPQ of the instrument and the use of a validation test plate. Also, um, there is a software validation package available. So when you start with SoftMax 4, it's always nice to start with assay methods that have already been set up, and you can choose from any of those 140 a protocol that you can fully customize later on. In addition, now there's the protocol home page and the protocol sharing. So if you select of Max Pro into the protocol, you will be able to uh, access the protocol home page and the export for sharing. This will bring you to a community page where here you can uh, you can have a look at some protocols that are available um, to use. So for example, here you have a, a protocol called uh, choosing between the 4P and the 5 curve fit. You can also upload your own protocol, and there's actually um, there's actually a, a competition every month where we so a panel uh, notes some softmax for protocol and um, elect a winner. In addition, at the moment, there's an academic upgrade promotion that is available through that link. So today, we've been able to start from a protocol that had very little data analysis to a completely analyzed protocol, and including the addition of columns and some summaries. So here you can see that from, from the, the starting protocol, we have been able to do the template, analyze the data, generate graphs, and create a new a node section where we have now the graph, some image, and some information about the experiment. So our goal has been achieved. We've been able to write uh, and analyze uh, fully a protocol. So now we're going to review uh, some questions, if you have some. And uh, if you have any question that comes in, please use either the chat window or the question and answer window that is available from the top menu of that presentation. Just select the top menu, and you can then use the chat window, or you can select the little arrow at the, at the right of the, the toolbar, and this will bring you the question and answer uh, window. Well, we, do, we don't seem to have any questions. So if, if you have any question that comes in uh, later, here is a two email address you can use. So it's either caroline.cardonel at moldev.com or infoboxeu at moldev.com. Please uh, send us your request, uh, and we will, um, we will answer you directly. Thank you very much for your attention, and I hope uh, we have answered your need today. Um, have a nice day. Bye-bye.